Our team researched the prevalence of anxiety disorders in adolescents and its effective treatments. According to the National Library of Medicine, one in eight children have anxiety disorders internationally, which is almost 250 million children. So how does anxiety affect these children? Well, neurologically, anxiety primarily affects the frontal cortex, which is in charge of motor tasks, judgment, creativity, and maintaining social situations. Anxiety affects this by uh, making the brain sensitive to danger and then making it difficult for the brain to develop rational responses to that perceived threat. And this can be seen through trouble with communication, personality changes, an increase or decrease in self-awareness, and mood swings. The second part of the brain that anxiety targets is the limbic cortex, which is in charge of behavioral regulation. When anxiety affects this, you're going to see the typical behavioral symptoms of anxiety, such as irritability, fatigue, irrational fears, and mood swings. And then physically, anxiety mostly affects the autonomic nervous system, which supplies nerve endings all over the body, but primarily in smooth muscles, and also controls their involuntary functioning. When anxiety affects the autonomic nervous system, you're going to see the physical symptoms of anxiety, such as nausea, headaches, tiredness, shortness of breath, and the churning feeling that anxious parents, uh, anxious patients mostly have. So what relationships cause anxiety? Well, the most important relationship in any child's life is the relationship to their parent. And in a study by Kim Kalu, she found that parents with high levels of anxiety tended to have children with higher levels of anxiety as well, not because of a genetic predisposition, but because through everyday situations and parenting choices that these anxious parents make, they involuntarily show their children anxious patterns very early on. And this leads to, as the children develop and respond to situations, what they're most comfortable with and what they've been around most is anxious patterns. And this contributes to their development heavily because it leads to a heightened anxiety in these children. And the second most important relationship in any child's life is the relationship with their community, mostly with children their own age. And this is seen through what is called social exclusion anxiety in children. When kids are too scared to be with children their age because they don't know how to act and they're afraid they're gonna do something wrong. Social exclusion anxiety is, is particularly harmful for children because it causes children to retreat and not be a part of social situations, which then leads to an underdevelopment of social skills, which just compounds the issue because since children aren't equipped to handle social situations like other children are, they don't want to be involved, which just compounds the issue of social exclusion anxiety. Now, what measures can be taken to minimize this anxiety? One way is with medication. In general practice, benzodiazepines are used in the management of anxiety disorders. What benzodiazepines do to help reduce anxiety is enhancing the activity of the neurotransmitter GABA, which is a chemical in the brain that helps people feel calm, while, the, while another medication is selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, also known as SSRIs. What they do to help reduce anxiety is increasing serotonin in the brain. Doing this affects neural systems, which regulate mood, sleep, appetite, and digestion. The benefits of medication is that it's a quick way to help minimize anxiety in children, as long as the right medication is prescribed. While other benefits are that of benzodiazepines and SSRIs are that they help in treatment of other medical diseases. An initial study between ben benzodiazepines that deal with chronic, chronicness and uh, dementia with a recent nationwide study of 235,465 patients reported no association between subsequent dementia and benzodiazepine use. This leads to the speculation that benzodiazepines may have protective effects against dementia. Benzodiazepines are also used in, the, in treating insomnia due to its calming effects on people. While SSRIs have been found to help the brain restructure parts of itself, this means the brain is more amiable to new changes in learning. However, the limitations of medication are cost, effectiveness, and side effects. The cost of these medications, since they have to be constantly taken for the treatment to show effectiveness, it can get very expensive, especially when there is no insurance. And the effectiveness of benzodiazepines is as really good at decreasing anxiety. However, it's not recommended for children due to it makes people, children feel irritable rather than calm. 
And the effectiveness of SSRIs is that while it helps the brain rest uh, restructure parts of itself, this doesn't mean anxiety is actually reduced. This means the brain is more capable of making changes that can lead to decreases anxiety, how, but it's up to the patient's responsibility to promote and learn new ways of ways that can, that they can better deal with anxiety provoking situations or learn how to avoid those situations. And the most serious side effects of benzodiazepines is drug tolerance, which can lead to psychological and physical dependence. And it's also known to be highly addictive. Because of this, this, is, this medication is only recommended for acute anxiety and for a short duration of time. While the common side effects of SSRIs are headaches, drowsiness, dizziness, and insomnia. The next thing we found to help with reduction in anxiety in children was therapy. Under therapy, we found two different treatments, the first being individual therapy. This is where a child will partake in therapy by themselves with their therapist or counselor. Then we found that another effective way was familial therapy. This is where a child will partake in therapy with their parent, guardian, or family member. In a study over eating-related anxiety disorders, it was shown that there is up to 90% improvement in children with adolescents when they were involved in individual therapy. In a meta-analysis done by N. Albon, it was shown that both types of therapy were effective. For individual therapy, it showed a major reduction in anxiety in children, and it showed that familial therapy was a good way to reduce anxiety in children whose parents also had anxiety. Both ways were proven to be very effective, and one wasn't proven to be more effective than the other. In Avon saw results from this meta-analysis by a review by Compton, which said that cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a psycho-based therapy or talk-based therapy with a therapist or counselor, is the treatment of choice for anxiety in children. In all 24 studies of this meta-analysis, it showed that cognitive behavioral therapy was a very active treatment with it being 68.9% effective in recovery. The limitations we found for therapy were cost and effectiveness. Therapy is not cheap. It can range anywhere from $50 to $300 per session. And this can start to build up, especially if children are seeing a therapist multiple times of the week. There are resources that help lower this cost, which could include insurance plans, and there are now online resources for therapy, which are cheaper. But some parents just don't have the money to be putting towards therapy for their children in the first place. A study done by Finn found that there is an intellectual development that some children are too young for that is required for therapy, especially in cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, and so this shows that therapy isn't a one size fits all. Some children see better benefits from it than others. Um, even though it has been proven to be effective and beneficial, it really just depends on the child if therapy will help them. So we believe therapy is the most effective solution because of the coping mechanisms and advice which can be given. And th these benefits which come from therapy make it a long lasting solution. Although medication may be more beneficial to some people, the benefits from medication can slowly stop working over time, which makes therapy a more reliable solution. Because the benefits of medication may eventually subside, um, oftentimes it will lead to overuse, which will lead to dependency, making therapy the most effective solution for anxiety in adolescents. I have some questions for you ladies. First question, um, Callista, how did the group decide to include NOLA's perspective lens or conclusion into the overall presentation? Well, NOLA's findings focused on how the parent relationship between parents and children is very crucial in the development of children. And especially when the parents get divorced or there's a loss of a parent due to death, it can significantly impact a child to where there's severe anxiety disorders. Because of that, we included that in our problem to show how much children need such as therapy as a solution to these life-changing events that they had recently occurred to them. Okay, Caroline, reflecting on your colleagues' work, which had the greatest impact on your overall understanding of the problem your group identified? 
I think Nola's because her her um, individual research was based on children mostly, and our group research was we, when we came together it was mostly about children, and since her research was about parental effects and like parental like parents getting divorced or a parent dying, like that effect on the child, this really helped like under help me understand like why therapy is more like important like or beneficial than medication okay. and um, Nola give one specific way that your thinking changed as a result of learning about Hannah's findings Hannah's findings really helped broaden my thinking on anxiety as a whole Hannah's findings were about where anxiety starts and how to better treat it this helped even connect to some of my own research which was over divorce and parent loss in children and it really helped show that anxiety is such a problem and that it starts from relationships and it just really widened my approach on how we need to lessen anxiety in children. And Hannah, what is an example of a compelling argument from one of your peers' individual reports that you decided to exclude from your team presentation and why? So in um, Callista and I's reports, one of our main solutions was that medication was the best choice for treatment in adolescence. And we, uh, when we came together, it was found that everyone else's, was, the main solution was mostly centered around therapy as the um, treatment of choice. And when we all came together and started doing research as a group, we did uh, find that therapy was the best. So coming together helped us um, figure out what would have been the most effective solution.